During my History of Cartoon Network video series, I mentioned one of the early pilots for Adult Swim called Welcome to Eltingville, about a club of nerds and their various antics. The pilot has gained a new life recently, as the iconic trivia off scene has gotten shared around several times. First as a meme where others put in various deep cut trivia and other fandoms, and recently people are using it as some sort of nostalgic piece to how good it was to be a nerd back in the 90s and early 2000s. Name three kinds of kryptonite. Green, red, and gold. What rock star played on the Star Wars Christmas album? John Bon Jovi. Name two songs off it. R2-D2, we wish you a Merry Christmas. And what do you get a Wookiee for Christmas when he already has a comb? <sighs> Who was Olive Oil's brother? Castor Oil. What Digimon digivolves into a Kakumon? Gumamon. Which Transformer transforms into a VW Beetle? Bumblebee. What wiped out the Triffids? The movie or the book? The movie. Seawater. Who played Commander Elliot in the green slime? Richard Jekyll. As much play as this clip has been getting, it's clear that many are unfamiliar with the original work, be it the pilot itself or the comic it's based on. Today, we're going to be looking at the history of the Eltingville Club and the intention of the original work. Evan Dorkin had an early life that many fans would dream of, a lifetime fan of not only superhero comics, but Mad Magazine. His fandom reached new heights when a comic shop opened up in his area which he would end up working at and even living in for a bit. He would eventually move to making comics himself, most notably two Predator series for Dark Horse, Big Game and Bad Blood, and his original work, Milk and Cheese, for Slave Labor Graphics. But it was in 1994 when he was working on a comic anthology for Dark Horse called Instant Piano that he would come up with his most recognizable work. Dorkin would write that at the time, he was feeling a lot of anger at the various parts of the nerd community. Not all of it, mind you, just the crazy ones who would send harassing letters and death threats to a fellow writer who recently killed off a comic book character by the name of Ice. Which, of course, is obviously not an overreaction considering comic characters have a long history of dying and not coming back. Which is why, of course, Ice was featured in a recent miniseries, Fire and Ice Welcome to Smallville, in 2024. He would take this anger and channel it into an off-the-cuff story for the Instant Piano Anthology. And so, the Eltingville comic book, science fiction, fantasy, horror, and role-playing club was born. A rather long title, but it got the point across. It was only originally supposed to be a one-shot. The name Eltingville comes from a real city in Staten Island. The comic opens with introducing the four members of the club. Bill, secretary of comics and de facto leader of the group, Josh, Secretary of Science Fiction, and who might look familiar to those who have checked out my channel before. Pete, Secretary of Horror, and obsessed with all aspects of horror, even the most obscure. Basically what labels like Vinegar Syndrome and Terror Vision were made for. But he would probably still complain about the releases being too expensive. And finally, Jerry, Secretary of Fantasy and Role-Playing Games, who turns out to be the only one with even a little sense in the end. The one-shot depicts the highlights of a typical meeting for the Eltingville Club, which starts with a rewatch of The Crow to affirm they actually like it, mostly because Brandon Lee died for real, and complaining they can't get hobby-related jobs because all the comic shops are closing. Weird how these are still topics of discussion even now. Time really is a circle. The club moved to Acquisitions, where Josh reports hitting multiple fast food locations to collect doubles of the Animaniacs Happy Meal toys, which were a real thing. So what else is new? Now in a Happy Meal, you can get one of eight wacky Animaniacs toys that pops up and down or goes round and round. May we take your order, please? Thanks. We're star. One toy with each Animaniacs Happy Meal you buy. And fully collected a full set of Flintstones collector's mugs, which were also a real thing. And make you remember how good McDonald's promos used to be. In need of the latest Stone Age material, glass. Every time you buy any extra value meal or any other purchase, you can get a mug for just 99 cents. That is a rock bottom price. So collect all four, because even before they're gone, they're history. What you want is what you get at Rock Donald's today. I love it here. <laughs> Josh also teases a video he obtained at a con of a tape compilation of nude scenes with various sci-fi actresses like Tasha Yar from Star Trek. Is Tasha Yar naked? Oh man, that's gotta be against the Prime Directive. But before that, they moved to random debates, such as for a movie casting. 
and their hate for Space Ghost as a talk show host. This reference is especially poignant considering Evan Dorkin and his wife, Sarah Dyer, both wrote for Coast to Coast, writing some classic episodes like Pilot, Telethon, Lawsuit, and Sequel, some of my personal favorites. Uh, I got a question. Yeah, babe, shoot. Um, just exactly, um, what do I do? Well, I told you, you just push the lever up and down, okay? Up, down, up, down, down. Wait a minute. They quickly pushed that thought aside for a little adult entertainment, with the tape Josh alluded to before. Unfortunately, when they finally get it to work, it turns out to be a fake. The group comes to blows and are kicked out of Bill's mom's basement. The ending teases that this may be the end of the Eltingville Club. But luckily, this was not the end, as the one shot did so well, he ended up making a follow up for the instant piano issue three. Bring me the head of Boba Fett. Evan Dorgan would go on to win an Eisner Award for the story, and it would be the main inspiration for the future Adult Swim pilot. The story focuses on the gang visiting their local comic shop on a day out and seeing a mint in box 12 inch Kenner Boba Fett. You like that, huh? I just got him in today. Never removed from box. It's so beyond mint, it's virginal. Wow. An original Kenner 12 inch Boba Fett in the Star Wars box. Wookie scalps and all. It's the stuff that dreams are made of. Bill and Josh fight over who gets to buy it, which results in a trivia off. Okay, guys, you know the rules. One question at a time, 30 seconds to answer, no hitting, no spitting, and no stupid crap like, what's Lucy Lawless's bra size? But I knew that one! As do all sad boys, Josh. It's here we wrap back around to the clip that's been popping up recently on Twitter. If this is all you saw of the pilot, and especially of the series as a whole, you might think that this is just some spirited competition among friends, but the comic version really highlights how crazy the event is, thanks to a mix of slightly more obscure trivia, but thanks to, but also thanks to Dorkin's art showing the group as monstrous, plus the added fighting. While the question that ends up slipping up Josh is different in both versions, the outcome is the same, with the two fighting over the figure and breaking its head off, leading to another possible end of the club, again. Oh my gosh, is this the end of the Eltingville Club? <laughs> Next, we move on to our first story with no adapted content, Bread and Suck Asses. This follows the trend of Josh being horrible, and he and the gang visit various fast food places and harass workers for promo items. Okay, uh, let me get the new Power Rangers Happy Meal toys. Whatever ones are new. They're, uh, for my niece. Do you have any Spider-Man toys left? I need a Mary Jane! All we got is Power Rangers. But I don't want Power Rangers! They're dumb! Well, well I'm sorry, that's all we got. What about Batman Forever glasses? All we got is Power Rangers. What about X-Men toys? That's Roy Rogers. Look, you gotta order any food. You have no X-Men figures? None? I find that hard to believe. I mean, the commercials are still on TV. I'm sure of it. I'm sorry, but we are out. We do have mini super soakers and an Apollo 13 cup. Mini super soakers? What am I, a baby? Forget it. Uh, what size soda gets you an Apollo 13 cup? This does a great job of highlighting the type of people who go through all the trouble of collecting stuff like this just either to just have it or to resell it. You can tell there's not even any real love for it when Josh refers to Congo as a shitty monkey movie. This escalates in a big way when they make their way to a grocery store for a TV guide, and Josh starts ripping open packs of bread for a specific Batman trading card, which is something Evan Dorkin admits to actually doing. Josh is caught and later grounded. Getting a mocking message from Bill, he breaks down to a sobbing mess and teases ending the club once again. Next would be Marathon Men, which nabbed Dorkin another Eisner win. <laughs> the story starts with the gang making trips to the local Toys R Us in search for figures, something I myself had good memories of, but not with the group. The group are looking for Superman animated figures, but are upset to learn 
but they're not being stocked until the current Man of Steel figures are sold. Josh describing them as so bad, he only bought one full set of them. In the store, the gang find in horror that the pegs are still full of Steel figures, a movie just about to release at the time. While Pete rants about Shaq appearing in a superhero movie, Josh mutters that he wishes that he could just burn down the whole display so he could get his brainiac. Pausing from his rant, Pete mentions that he is a lighter. I can't, I can't believe you fucking did that. You're a fucking psycho, Pete. I didn't mean to. It just flamed on. After escaping the fire, the gang gathers some final supplies for a 36-hour Twilight Zone marathon. And in an actually cool idea, they play a game where they get a point if they guess the episode the fastest. But this quickly degrades into madness, allowing Dorkin to show off his art style in the most extreme way possible. As each panel and page progresses, the gang further and further degenerates. It's no wonder why Dorkin won an Eisner for this. Next is a short story, Captain's Log, Stardate 5598.7, another Josh-centric story. I'm starting to think that Dorkin may have some connection to him. The story is a day in the life of Josh after the disaster of the Twilight Zone Marathon. Josh writes about needing to get a job and picking where to apply based on the fast food place that has the best tie-in promo. Speaking of, Taco Bell's Godzilla promo was absolutely peak. It actually made me want to watch the movie as a kid. It was my first real intro to Godzilla. Little did I know, years later, when I finally did watch it, how much of a mistake that was. The cartoon was pretty good, though. Uh-oh. I think I need a bigger box. Josh also applies at Toys R Us, something else I have in common with him, although I actually work there for a holiday season. It's also revealed that the club has a secret stash of toys they hide so they can buy later, which is something I used to do in my younger days when I had little to no money. But I was not obsessed enough to hide and buy multiples of the same figure. There's also a through line of the short that sees Josh eating DC-shaped macaroni and cheese for every meal, even breakfast, so he can get enough proofs to trade in for a DC balancing toys something that leads to painful diarrhea in the middle of the night. The comic really shows just how sad and pathetic Josh is. He seems to hate his friends, and they hate him, with Josh having nightmares about times the gang beats him up and mocks him for being fat. His life revolves around pop culture, not because he seems to like it, but because it's there, collecting and buying new things just to have it. It's amazing how much you can see this reflected in fandoms nowadays. I've seen some people make the point that the comic is just a straw man to attack all fans, but that could not be further from the case. It's clear Dorkin is a fan, and likes the same things being mentioned in the series. Maybe not to the obsessive, exaggerated point depicted, but still. The point of all this is to mock and hold a mirror to the type of people who make this their whole life, and while getting absolutely no real joy out of it, continue to consume and obsess and hate and annoy for the pure sake of it. This is a group of friends who are initially brought together due to their love of media, but were corrupted by losing sight of that passion, which is something that's addressed later. It also showed the dedication of being a hater back in the day. Now you can just harass anyone you want on Twitter, but back then you had to actually write letters and mail them in with a damn stamp. Unstable molecules would see the gang make last-minute costumes to enter a photo contest for Wizard Magazine, with hilarious results. Next would be The Intervention, the last Eltingville story that would get Dorkin an Eisner Award. The Intervention is finally a Bill story. After another fight with the club over a weighted dice, Bill is kidnapped and taken to his room by two men who were revealed to be hired by Bill's mom to break him of his nerdy addictions and pop culture obsessions. What follows is, much like Marathon Men, a slow descent into madness, but not for Bill, but for his kidnappers. The two men in question used to be hardcore nerds just like Bill, but they turned their life around and offer their service to help other nerds touch grass. However, it seems that Bill is too far gone and starts to turn it around on the men 
after hours of torture. What I like about this story is that as many times as I've read it, I can't tell who's in the right here. Obviously, Bill is a weird asshole, but he has passion, and that accounts for something. And although it's good to maybe keep things in perspective sometimes, and not go too crazy with your fandom, there's no reason to abandon it entirely. I don't want to go off on a rant here, but the concept that you have to give up on what you like and are passionate about just to find happiness is absolute bullshit, especially when it has to do with these nerd hobbies. 40-year-old virgin can go to hell for teaching people that you have to give up everything that you are just to get laid. Honestly, screw that film, man. Fuck it. Anyway, after a long and grueling session, Bill ends up breaking the men, and they revert back to their old fandom ways. Next is a fun little short called As Seen on TV, which sees Josh call into a home shopping network show that is selling comic book memorabilia. Our next item, folks, is the special edition first appearance of Spider-Man, featuring the origin of the Amazing Spider-Man, and signed by the legendary creator of Spider-Man, Stan the Man Lee. It was $50, but we have it for only $25, folks. Can't get it anywhere else. And as you know, Spider-Man is red hot right now. That's lot 7765, the Stan Lee signed Spider-Man first appearance, and you might want to jump on this, they're moving real fast. We also have just a few Alex Ross signed items left, including the Spider-Man lithograph, the exclusive Battle for Planet snowboard. Rumor has it that Alex's signing hand is starting to go numb. So signed items might become scarce soon. And you heard it here first, folks. All right, I'm getting the signal from Corey that we fixed the problem with the phones. So let's take a call from someone out there who's taken advantage of our incredible offers. Hi, who am I speaking with tonight? Hey, Scotty. This is Josh Levy from Eltingville, New York. Uh, say, Josh, didn't I speak with you on last month's show? Sure did, Scotty. I never miss a show. I even got them all on tape. Well, uh, that's that's great to hear, Josh. So tell me, what great collectibles did you order tonight? Well, I got the alternate sign variant version Spider-Man movie poster. Pretty terrific, huh? Only a few of these babies left. And I got the sign limited Witchblade statue and the sign Alex Ross Aquaman shower curtain. Well, Josh, you certainly sound happy with your purchases. Uh, Scotty, can I just say something? Uh, sure. Because I have a little bone to pick with you. You see, when you said Stan Lee created Spider-Man, you were only half right. You left out Steve Ditko, who co-created Spider-Man in 1962. Oh, okay. Well, thanks for pointing that out, Josh. Also, Captain Marvel's name happens to be Captain Marvel, not Shazam. If you were a little better informed, you would know the reason they have to put Shazam. Right, well, Josh, we have to move on, and I'm sure you've got to get some sleep before school tomorrow. Well, you see, that's just it, Scotty. This is my school. That's why I find it a little irritating when you continuously mispronounce people's names and get your facts wrong. It's unprofessional, and it's an insult to the creators whose work you sell, as well as the fans who buy it. Uh, Corey, can can we, uh, you know... I mean, I asked you about this before. Would it actually be that difficult to do a little research? I bet you wouldn't get some dumb sports guy's name wrong, or one of those crones who make those nauseating porcelain dolls. What do you mean the phones are screw messed up again? Eventually, Bill joins in on the call to further harass the host for getting things wrong. Hey, Scotty, this is Bill Dickley. I just wanted to say that I've always been a fan of the show. Well, uh, thanks, but... That is, until tonight. I mean, you're really disrespecting comics, man. Not to mention us fans. You know, there's already six online postings from fans ripping you a new one over the Supergirl screw-up. Corey, would you please cut these geeks off already? This is ridiculous! Scotty, don't call them geeks on the air. Well, what should I call them? Captains of industry? You know, Scotty, you don't gotta be all defensive and insult people just because they know more than you do. Okay, look, I admit I made a few little mistakes. I'm sorry. Now, could you just- Little mistakes? How would you like it if some jerk on TV got your origin wrong? Or got your name wrong and called you Scotty Hardon or something? Why, you- Corey, did you hear that? Now, would you please get rid of them? Get rid of him, Corey? You don't know shit about comics. 
They cursed Corey. They. You tell him, Bill. Did you get Alex Ross to do the show? He's got to come in to sign all the stuff anyway. Eltingville would have one more special short, this time in full color printed in the Dark Horse Presents anthology. Titled, They're Dead, They're All Messed Up. A reference to an iconic line in Night of the Living Dead. Are they slow moving, Chief? Yeah, they're dead. They're all messed up. The short sees the gang attend a zombie crawl event. But after hearing some rumbling about people wanting to adopt the mannerisms of the fast-moving zombies that were popular at the time, they decided to trip up some of the runners. This, of course, goes bad. Another fight with the gang ensues, and they all go their separate ways. Josh ends up scaring his mom into a heart attack. Up until this point, all the shorts were spread in a lot of different directions. Many stories were printed in Dorkin's own anthology series named Dork, where he would also write and draw other short stories. The first short being published in 1994, it would take another 20 years for the Eltingville Club to get a proper name series, which would turn out to be the beginning and the end. The Eltingville Club number one, also titled This Fan, This Monster, opens with a great looking page of Bill in the Rain. It's revealed he's waiting outside the comic shop. Today he starts his first day working there. Evan Dorkin has mentioned in the supplemental material in the collected edition that he had worked at a comic shop before, so I can only imagine that much of the story is ripped from real life, which makes some of what is depicted even sadder. Bill's new boss is one of the worst comic shop owners, using the job as an excuse not to do any real work. He's rude to the customers, refuses special orders, slacks off to talk to customers to make himself look better, and clearly scams the other customers. Soon, Joe is called away on emergency business, puts Bill in charge, who immediately goes crazy with power, treating customers like shit like he always dreamed, and taking advantage of the benefits Joe keeps to himself. Soon, we cut to the rest of the gang, making their way to the shop, unaware of where Bill is, or that he's working there. It's there we see little more development outside of Bill and Josh, especially Jerry, who up to this point was more of a background voice, with not much of a personality. He becomes sort of a voice of reason. As the other two complain about getting to a movie, they know that they'll hate. But soon, they enter the shop and discover the horrible truth, and Josh does not take it well. Seeing this, Bill rides the high, and finally tells his so-called friends how he really feels about them, and bans them outright from the store. A fight ensues, destroying the store, with Joe coming back in time to see the destruction. Bill tries to sell out the gang by exposing their theft over the years, and another fight starts, with Joe going absolutely nuts. Bill becomes trapped under rubble, and has to escape in a sequence inspired by a famous one in Amazing Spider-Man number 33. Freeing himself also causes him to snap, sparking a lighter and dropping it over a stack of comics. The fire is quickly put out by a kiddie pool dropping through the roof, which was being used to catch rainwater rather than fix the leak. Cut to black. Oh my god, did you hear? That horrible store I went to burned down yesterday. Crazy, huh? Where am I going to get treated like shit now? I was there. Bill Ducky looked like the tar man from Return of the Living Dead when he crawled out. They all got arrested. Joe's still in, though. Don't know why. Joe sucked, but now there's nothing. I heard Joe reset the fire for the insurance. The worst part is I left my comics behind when I ran out. I still say Madrox is cool. Wait, Joe hit a cop? All those comics gone. And those Ultimate Club assholes are alive. Shit. Kitty pool? I hope they go to prison and get beaten to death. Yeah, my King City trade arrived from Amazon today. Fuck that guy. Kenny Leto says Joe wasn't paid up on insurance. I believe it. I was already thinking about drafting my last few titles anyway. More money for games. You can still smell the loneliness in the air. Those jerks are lucky they aren't 18 yet. Still, I'd hate to be them right now. Or, like, ever. What? is wrong with you for god's sakes where do you get these ideas what goes through your mind we do for you and we do for you and this is what we get a son who puts his mother in the hospital why don't you just stab her to death and get it over with here i'll go get you a knife you can cut my throat too while you're at it 
we'd be better off stabbed to death than to have such an ungrateful putz for a son. I don't know where I've gone wrong with you, Bill. I really don't. But it's obvious I've done something to make you hate me. Maybe it was the divorce. Like that was my fault. Jesus. Anyway, I spoke to my sister in Michigan about us staying with her for a while after this shit settled. Christ, Mom, can't this wait? Shit, I'm trying to watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. here. And another thing. You're gonna get a job this summer. And you're gonna learn to act like a fucking human being. Like your brothers. Got that? No more of this bullshit. You ain't a baby. You don't need kid crap, toys and crap. All this shit goes in the garbage tomorrow. You hear me? And if you ever go near them so-called friends of yours, I'll break your fucking legs for you, so help me. Needless to say, we're very disappointed with you, Gerald. When your father gets back from his business trip, we'll have more to discuss about this, as you might expect. All I'll say right now is that when we're at the courthouse, you might want to say goodbye to those friends of yours, because it's the last time you'll ever see them. Okay, guys, now we're all sworn in and everything's official. I hereby call to order the first official meeting of the Eltonville Comic Book Science Fiction Fantasy Horror and Role Playing Club. I still say the name of the club is too long, and the initials don't spell out a cool secret organization name, like Shield or AIM or Spectre. Ah, who cares about some dumb initials? The real problem is that horror should go in front of fantasy. Horror makes you face your fears, and fantasy is just made up stuff, full of elf crap. Don't be a jerk, Pete. You know fantasy's more than elf crap. There's wizards and dragons and dwarves. Dwarves are just blue-collar elves. They are not. Come on, guys. Do you want to argue about stupid crap, or do you want to have fun? I mean, isn't this supposed to be about having fun? Beady, beady, beady. It's the end of the Eltingville Club, Buck. Heatstroke. We're gonna get it. We're all gonna get heatstroke. Son of a bitch, how long is this line? They're letting people in, right? I mean, they must be. They have to be. Can anyone see? Please tell me they're letting people in. It's so hot. Oh dear God, we're never going to get in. At this rate, we'll be lucky to get in by Sunday. Let me tell you, this one has it all. This baby is pure, solid, pre-code gold. You got your good girl art, your headlights, your injury to eye motif, your injury to headlights motif, Racism, sexism, murder, torture, bondage, sadomasochism, erotic spanking, drug use, alcohol, contempt for the law, contempt for authorities, Satanism, occultism, blood, mutilation, blood draining, blood drinking, I mean, what's not to like? Yeah, well, look, I... You think I'm kidding? This little number would make Wortham puke in his grave. It makes EC look like DC. It makes murder morphine and me look like slap fight, soda pop, and some sissies. That's great, but I'm looking for animal comics, especially the issues Walt Kelly worked on. Animal comics, huh? Well, whatever floats your boat. Tell you what, let me open this bad boy up. I wouldn't be surprised if we found a little bestiality in there somewhere. Look, I'm sorry, but I'm not interested in... Well, get interested. Do you realize this is one of only six copies known to exist that isn't damaged, faded, or spunk-encrusted? Uh... Um, uh, excuse me. I didn't do nothing! It fell, okay? It just fell. Jesus Christ, haven't you ever had something slip and fall from a bag before? It's not like Bigfoot, for fuck's sake. It's just an ordinary, everyday, common occurrence. You see it at every con I've been to. Holy shit. Jerry? You scared the shit out of me. <laughs> I knew it was you, Bill. Or at least your doppelganger. Sorry if I scared you, man. Holy crap. It's been a while, huh? Ten years, Effendi. Wow. Yeah. You, uh... 
you look healthier, like you leveled up or something. Yeah, well, I, I work out, try to eat right, all that stuff. You look good, still rocking the plaid, I see. Nah, I'm just cosplaying as my younger self. <laughs> well, you've nailed the outfit, dude. So what brings you all the way out here to no fans land? I'm just killing time before some meeting with some people. I'd figure I'd try to hunt down some Conan back issues. Meeting? <laughs> here at Comic-Con? Shit. Sounds like the beady bitty kid's doing okay. Uh, yeah, I, I can't complain. How about you? Things going all right? Yeah, well, you know, haven't burned down any comic shops in a while. <laughs> Holy shit. What was up with us? You're asking me? We should all be on fucking meds. Yeah, just not Josh's mom's stash. <laughs> oh shit, don't even. Don't even. Man, this is too weird. They never surprised you're even talking to me. Dude, I don't hold grudges. Never did. Not even back then. I wouldn't have been able to hang out with you guys otherwise. Besides, back then was back then. Long time ago, far, far away. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you in the middle of anything? I got a lunch meeting at one o'clock. Why don't you come with me? What? Oh, I, I, I don't know, Jerry. I don't want to be a fifth wheel on the Batmobile, you know? Oh, no, dude, believe me. It's not a problem. These guys are cool. It'll be fine. Seriously. Well, ah, come on, Bill. Ten years! Ah, what the hell. Come on, let's get out of here. Great, I'll text ahead to let him know to grab an extra seat. Ten years. Jesus. Probably takes us another five to get us this goddamn crowd. Soylent Green is made out of cosplayers. Remember? Pete used to say that. Uh, you say something, Bill? Uh, nothing. So, who are you meeting up with, anyway? Oh, you know, industry people. Don't... Don't worry. They're cool. Are you fucking kidding me? This is the son of a bitch that you wanted us to save a seat for? The only seat I'd save for that walking virile disease is the fucking electric chair. Tell me this isn't real. Tell me this is the shitty hologram. Some ass clown cosplaying as my worst nightmare evil pure and simple these guys are cool ah, goomba boy and fat jack the comic crip these two orcs wouldn't be cool if they were sucking on mr freeze's nutsack okay wait everyone just stop okay pete josh come on guys don't leave damn it jerry if you told me he was coming i never would have met up with you guys i never would have gotten back to you on facebook Shit, you think I know about this? I'd gargle smog vomit before going near any of you assholes on purpose. Oh, come on, guys. Nah, -uh. no, come on, guys. Fuck, come on, guys. Every time you busted out of with the come on, guys, we ended up in some seriously deep shit. But, but nothing, Jerry. What were you fucking thinking? You let the Red Death in. You invited Dracula. I don't know, Pete, I guess... I guess I was thinking it was fate, you know? Randomly encountering Bill right before our meetup? I guess I was thinking this would be an opportunity for us to settle things. Bury the hatchet. Talk over old times. Maybe I was thinking we were grown-ups now. Who don't need to yell at each other and act like dicks in public. Maybe Jerry has a point... We're not teenage fanboys anymore, are we? I mean, he said old times. And not ye old times, right? See, good omen. Come on, guys. I don't know. I got a bad feeling about this. Tell you what, I'll pay for lunch, okay? What do you say? Seriously? You're trying to bribe us with shitty overpriced convention food? Yes. Well, I am kind of hungry. Oh, what the fuck? If I can still talk to my piece of shit mom, I could stomach your asses for an hour or so. Awesome! Jesus wept. So anyway, I end up working for my old man. And it's only a week before I'm looking to chug a fucking six-pack of Drano. The only thing that kept me going is my horror shit. My weekends, I'm hitting movies and festivals. Then I start volunteering at local cons. Eventually, I'm helping out at Chilla. 
And that is when shit gets real. Instead of getting autographs from Tom Savini and son of son of Sven Gulli, I'm hanging out with the fucking guys. Nice. I know, right? Anyway, last year after the con, I'm at a party talking with some people on the subject of horror porn comics comes up. Which, of course, I know like the back of my dick. Let me tell you, the mark of quality horror porn is when you want to jerk off to the girls getting killed as much as when they're getting fucked. So I'm schooling these yinks when one of them decides to challenge me. And I'm sure you know how that went. Born of the Dead. <laughs> Seen it. Last whorehouse on the left. Seen it. Penthouse Pet Cemetery. Seen it. D I know who you did last summer. Seen it. An American werewolf in your ass. Can't unsee it. Gape fear. I spurt on your grave. Cream, blackula cream. Intercourse with the vampire. Squirters in the room morgue. You want casts and credits? Right on. He tries to trip me up, switching to more obscure, non-parody stuff, but I'm still kicking his ass when he says, Okay, how about Bitch Pit? <laughs> oh, Christ, not that sloppy piece of shit. The boom mic was in it so fucking much, I should have got a fucking screen credit. Best fucking thing in it, too. It gets real quiet, and well, long story short, I was too dumbass drunk to recognize Butchie Mofo of Sick Mofo Productions, who made a bitch pit. But here's the kicker. He says I got balls and know my shit. And he can use a shit worker with some balls. So lo and fucking behold, I am now officially a sick mofo. I mostly do grunt shit, but I'm starting to do PA stuff. And I'd clean the set of bitch pit too with my tongue if it meant staying in the business. Besides, there's other perks. Yeah, like what? Like getting to watch chicks covered in fake blood fuck like beasts. Holy shit. Tell me you get some of that. Hell yeah, you kidding? Some of them sluts are so whacked out or desperate for an in, they'll fuck anyone. You should see how my boss operates. <laughs> Now I know why they call it exploitation cinema. It's like we say at MoFo, living the dream, making girls scream. <laughs> so how about you, Josh? Well, basically, after we moved, my parents insisted I go to college. Worst four years of my life. They wanted me to get a business degree like my dad. <laughs> I thought I could at least take some writing classes there, but they were all useless, pure bullshit. Mr. Levy, are you sure that you want to be here? This is an introduction to writing course, not to superhero fan fiction. Oh, and might I add, I believe Spider-Man is hyphenated. The fools. I kept writing, though. Even after college, sent some to publishers, but never heard back from them. I posted fanfic online and caught a shit bombing from the Philistines, including my nemesis, Greedo318. Oh shit, that fucking guy? I heard from that son of a bitch in ages. Lucky you. I still deal with that fuck because of my job. Huh? Where do you work, cyberstalker daycare? Not exactly, but I was getting to that. So anyway, yeah, no one would look at my writing, so I figured fuck it. I'll just do what everyone else who can't break in does and start a website about comics. And the thing is, it fucking worked. I mean, it took years and I had to learn some hard lessons. Like, don't say anything that might piss off someone you want to work for. Yeah. But it paid off. I reviewed, I interviewed, I cut and pasted PR, and I got to know people, got to write for other sites, and got hired by great power the number 11 comics-related site on the web. And unfortunately, a site frequented by Greedo fucking 318. Still, I'd put up with Greedo 1 through 10,000 as long as it hooks me up with a four-day press pass. Not bad, huh? And if all goes well next year, it'll be a professional badge. Oh yeah? Why's that? Well, see, I'm angling for a job at DC Comics. 
Yes, <laughs> what? Art model for bouncing boy. <laughs> Actually, any low-level job's okay as long as it's a step closer to editorial. You? An editor? Janitor, maybe. Hey, come on, Bill. Truce, remember? Sorry, sorry. I just... I mean, you've read his shit. Auto, manimal, and machine, hello? Uh, yeah, don't you gotta know grammar and shit to be an editor? Hello, this is comics we're talking about. Do artists need to know anatomy? Do writers have to know how to actually end a story? How hard can it be when you have spell check? I kind of think there's more to it than that. Whatever. Doesn't matter, it's comics. You wing it. Learn as you go. Look, there's really only two requirements for getting a job in comics. One, read a lot of comics. And I've read a lot of comics. Two, have some connections to people in comics. I've got connections. So do most sewers. Ho oh, ho, hardy har har. Keep trying, Billykin. Anyway, with the site, I deal with pros and publishers, and, you know, you basically partner up, help out, push certain things. I mean, it's like you practically work for them already. And this show could be a big break. The guy who owes me a favor of DC is going to introduce me around. Maybe even get me into a DC party. Not bad, huh? Yeah, that's awesome, dude. Yeah, not bad, Josh. No, not bad. I just have to keep working it. Eat a few more years of shit until one day... Shazam! There I am in the big sandbox, full of all the best fucking toys ever. Batman, Superman, Superboy, Hal Jordan, Green Lantern, Monel, Monel. Then I'll start all over again, only from within, like a conquering virus, until I'm in position to establish my so called shitty fan fiction as canon. That'll show them, all of them. And the butthurt little fan shits that don't like it can go bag Borg and skull fuck themselves. Well, that's awesome. Josh is still crazy. I mean, good luck with the crazy plan and shit, but you're crazy, bro. No, just watch. A few years from now, Josh will be helping to ruin comics for the rest of us and loving it. I could care less if Josh ruins comics. I quit reading them years ago to think of fucking. Thanks for the jealous vote of confidence, Bill. Let me guess, while I'm ruining comics, you'll be lousing up a comic shop. Or did that little dream of yours go up in flames? As a matter of fact, Josh, the dream of opening my own shop is still very much alive. Kind of like a phoenix rising from the ashes, you might say. Yeah, I'd rather not. I admit, it's a slow build to a brick and mortar. But at least I'm not looking at years of shit-eating like some people. Nice table talk, by the way. See, I didn't get the free ride here like you and Pete. I paid for my own badge with my own money, which I earned as an independent dealer and expert in comics and collectibles. So, you sell shit on eBay. Hey, that is a gross misrepresentation of my business model, as well as an ignorant swipe at legitimate online vendors. Oh, excuse me. Besides, selling shit on eBay is only a small part of my involvement in the fan service market. <laughs> fan service? When he is selling upskirt shots at a Pervo site? Nah, he's giving hand jobs to Warcraft shut-ins. <laughs> Listen, you trolls, it just so happens I started my very own business venture, a very successful collection maintenance service called Pristine Mint. Collection maintenance? You mean you're like a janitor for comic shops? No, 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 Jesus Christ, would you shut up and let me explain? Pristine Mint was a service for the collector who had everything except the time to take care of their collection. What we do is go to the client's home and see to it that the collection was kept in top condition. That meant providing a wide range of professional services. Bagging, boarding, grading, and appraising. Cataloging, organizing, cleaning, dusting, unboxing, building, setting up, arranging, repairing, whatever. Kind of brilliant, huh? Right, so you ain't a nerd janitor. You're a maid for geeks. 
Oh, I fucking swear, Pete. Hey, hey, come on, Pete. I think it's a really interesting idea. Interesting? Shit, before I shut down, we were making serious money. I was thinking of hiring more mentors. Maybe even franchising. Whoa, whoa. If the business of yours was so fucking great, then why the fuck shut it down? Uh, huh? Huh? Well, uh, it's like... You know how collectors can be, right? Well, it turns out high-end collectors like my clients are even bigger fucking OCD assholes. They bitch and moan about every little thing while I was trying to do my job. After a while, I got sick of their petty fucking bullshit. You mean I'm paying you to sit on your ass all day reading my comics? N no, i I'm just been orienting myself to your collection. Besides, I thought you were supposed to be back at six. Please tell me the Frazetta statue's okay. The, the Manara? My Kirby page? Oh god, but you're insured, right? Right? Bill, there's a crazy man on the phone screaming about some missing Hulk comic. Oh, oh shit. Uh, tell him I'm not home, Mom. So I said, fuck it. That's not how I want to make my money. Unlike some people, I'm not willing to eat shit, lick shit, take shit, kiss ass, or watch my step. Fuck that noise. I'm doing business here with some associates of mine, people who respect my vision and are very interested in backing my shop. I don't know, Bill, dusting action figures is still dusting, and that's straight up made shit. Fuck that. What I want to know is why he didn't just hire some people to deal with the asshole customers. I... Hey, enough about me. I want to hear what Jerry's up to. Come on, Jared, tell us how you kept busy in the real world. Well, mostly I play magic. Yep, Magic the Gathering, or as Pete used to call it, Jerry's wizard shit. I guess I've got the club's breakup to thank for it. Left me with a lot of free time on my hands. Time I spent getting really serious about the game. I played and studied obsessively. Watched tournaments, listened to podcasts, talked to other players. My goal was to become good enough that I could play and win on the Pro Tour circuit. And by Heliod, that's what I did. The money isn't much. I play, I run workshops, write articles. I've got meetings this weekend with some potential sponsors, so who knows? But the thing is, magic's given me a lot. I've made some good friends, I, I travel, I love the game, love the community. It's been very fulfilling. It's done a lot for me as a person. Yeah, I could never really get into that magic. Me neither. Too magic-y. Yeah. Well... Anyway, I guess we're all kind of lucky, huh? I mean, doing what- Holy shit! Hey guys, check out the horror of Party Beach over there. Huh? Where? There! See? Holy double plus and good way too much play in that cosplay. She looks like 10 pounds of overstock in a 5 pound poly bag. Oh hey, it's a zombie girl. Real original. It's a good choice for ugly chicks. Gores like gravy and covers up bad meat. Oh, please, a tan ain't Mexican. And it's fish nets, not fishing nets, you cow. How do you say fat ass backwards? Oh, for fuck's sake, who remembers Lady Thor? Give it up, sister, no one gave a shit. Get your ass on a real costume, something worth looking at, like Vampirello or Emma Frost. Ah, eh, she ain't got the bags for Emma Frost. Hey, what about that one? Huh? Not too bad if you squint. Outfits off model, belts wrong, boots suck. Still, I'd do her. <laughs> You'd fuck a puddle of vomit if I had a decent shape. I would not. Seriously, you think any of these bimbos know a damn thing about who they're dressed up as? A pair of tits over there. You think she has any freaking idea who created Supergirl? Otto Binder. Kurt Swan. Damn straight, because you're for real. Eltingville Uber LS. Uh, hey, guys... Son of a bitch, is that Lilo, or did somebody roll a pig in a Charmin 12-pack? Look who she's with. That's no mystique. That's a mistake. Guys, unbelievable. I mean, don't ugly chicks look in the mirror and get it? I know, right? They should only allow certain people to cosplay. No big-ass Batgirls, plus-size Poison Ivies, 
Chunky Chung Lee's or Skanky Slave Leia's. You either look exactly like the character, top to bottom, or you stay the fuck at home. They ought to add that to all the harassment policies to protect your fucking eyes. No wood, no good. Erection or ejection. Hey, guys, how about we... You know what's worse? Checking out a hot cat woman or whatever and finding out it's actually a fucking guy. Ugh, that shit's fucked up. Turns my dick to smoke every time. If I was a DC, I'd put a stop to that crap. Come on, guys, really, people are just having fun, you know? Why be dicks about it? It paid to get in, they can do what they want. Oh yeah? Well, we paid to get in. Why can't we do what we want? Yeah, we're just having fun, Jer. Why you gotta be a dick about it? You know, we used to dress up in costumes. None of us looked like we were drawn by Jim Lee. That's different. We never cosplayed. Sure we did. We did not. Okay, whatever. My point is, how would you feel if we never cosplayed, Jerry? If you say so. We never cosplayed, understand? Never. We never pranced around in public like pathetic fucktards flashing our tits for attention. Dude, relax. We character reenacted. We dressed in our favorite characters out of respect and youthful exuberance. What was all that wrestling about then? Yo, shut the fuck up and look at what just walked in here. Holy crap, look at the proton packs on that Ghostbusters over there. Man, busting would definitely make me feel good. She's got the tools, I bet she's got the talent. Guys, she'd look good slimed, huh? She's got my tool wanting her talent. Tell me you wouldn't cross streams to get that ass. I'd eat my own ass to be her key master. Come on, guys. Hey, you know, she looks familiar. Oh, suck my dick. That's the redhead correspondent from the Nerd News Tonight. Oh, no way. You ever see her do an interview on a classic Trek mini? Prime whacking material. Half a box of tissues. Guys, honestly. She's coming this way. Christ, all the blood's rushing to my fun bits. Guys, if she asks if you're a god, tell her fuck yeah. Hey, sweetie. Hey. Uh, guys, this is my girlfriend, Mandy. Manny, this is Pete and Josh. Hey, Jerry's told me a lot about you guys. And this is Bill. Oh, it's it's okay, man. Jerry, seriously, it's okay. Sorry I'm late. The siren on the Ghostbusters car wasn't working right, so the segment got held up. <laughs> man works on Nerd News Tonight. We uh, met when I was on the show. Wait, she's staying? Well, yeah, I asked her to come over. Is that a problem? We never had a girl at a club meeting before. Girls weren't allowed. Okay, like, is this some kind of joke? Because if I'm not welcome here... Ah, don't listen to him. Besides, it ain't no friggin' meeting. The club's been dead and buried. And there ain't a drop of troxin around. Um, okay. Wait, didn't Agnes Rosky show up for a meeting at Bill's? No. No. She only stopped by to drop Warhammer figures off for Jerry. She was asked to leave, and she left. Crying. Um, so, Mandy, has Jerry ever told you about any of the stuff we did back in our club days? He told me about a few things. The zombie crawl, the million fan march. He still has flashbacks if he sees the Twilight Zone. Oh, jeez. Oops, sorry, babe. Man, did Josh go fucking Abe that night. Trashed his parents' whole basement. Oh, fuck you. You're the one who started a fire in Toys R Us. Ah, that was baby shit. Not like Bill burning down a comic. Hey! Hey, let's not go there, okay? Let's talk about fun times. We had fun times, right? Right? Fun times? Oh, God. Remember the discs of Tron game we made up using hubcaps? Two busted windows, a trip to the emergency room, and everyone grounded for a month. What about Pete's horror movie, Zombie Salmarilia? What a brilliant fucking move that was. Us and real knives, not to mention real blood. <laughs> and there's Josh goes and rips open every fucking loaf of Wonder Bread in the store. I swear, you can make a TV show out of us about all the crazy shit we pulled. Shut up, Pete. I only gave my mom two heart attacks. 
Cops caught us trying to steal a Thor poster from a bus kiosk. How many times did Bill's mom kick us out of the house? Yeah, community service sucks. Turns out there's a reason no one plays backyard rollerball. And Mark Wade just looks at us like we're assholes. Bill punched Jerry right in the face. Joshua, Josh and Stein, Josh Zilla, Josh Hotep. How many times did we get thrown out of Joe's? I think we gamed about 18 hours before all the hot pockets blew out our depends. Oh fuck, Jerry's high elvish poetry. Then his dumb ass wooden Iron Man suit bursts into flames. Stole the kid's Happy Meal toy and his nuggets. Bullshit, Josh. We warned you if you went to that Klingon camp, there'd be dire consequences. So, after all that, Bill and Josh are fighting over this fucking Boba Fett like King Kong and Godzilla. And then snap, the fucking thing breaks in two. 250 down the shitter. Bill gets the head, Josh gets the body. And we all get the boot. Fucking hilarious, huh? Well, yeah, I just can't believe how seriously you took everything. Of course someone like you wouldn't understand. Excuse me? Oh, come on. It's obvious you call the Ecto-1 the Ghostbusters car. You don't get Pete's Return to the Living Dead reference. You're not a real fan. You cosplay as one. Whoa, excuse me for not passing your bullshit nerd test. Bill, what the hell? All right, all right, calm the hell down. Hey, Bill, uh, you, uh, you still got the head? You mean this? Oh, God. Oh, God, it's you. It's really you. H how much, Bill? How much? Not for sale, Josh. Fifty bucks, Bill. Sixty. Seventy-five. Not for sale, Josh. What if I could get you free DC digital comps? I torrent that shit. Josh, why don't you just buy a new one? I mean, a new old one. You don't understand. It wouldn't be the same. He's the one true 12-inch Kenner Boba Fett. The only one I want. Oh, cut it out, Josh. Quit trying to make me look bad in front of the... Please, Bill, anything. Just name it. Guide. Triple guide. Rip-off guide. Look... Just fuck off, okay? Fuck off! I told you you'd never get your fat fucking fingers on it, and I meant it. You lost, Josh, and you'll always lose because you're a big, fat pile of shit loser. So, like, were you guys ever actually friends? God damn it, I knew it. I just fucking knew it. See, this is why girls weren't allowed in the club. What the fuck, Bill? Sit the fuck... No, Jerry. Let him go. I want to hear this bullshit. Oh, yeah. Well, listen up, bitch. Because I'm on to you. I watched you sitting there, laughing at us, mocking us, shoving your tits in our face to work us all up. You can't stand seeing us all get along. So you gotta stick your twat where it doesn't belong to try and cunt everything up. Well, it won't work. You may have ruined fandom. You and all your other cultural immigrants who invaded our territory. But you won't ruin us. This club is bitch-free. Hear that, you venom-dipped whore-cunt? This club is bitch-free! Wow. I mean, I'm someone who thinks women ain't more than just receptacles, and even I'm offended by that shit. Well, that was fun. We should do it again sometime when we're all stupid on Alzheimer's. Shit, even dead, I'm afraid I'll lie dreaming of Eltingville. I'm so, so sorry about that, sweetie. Are you okay? You know me. I'm used to it by now. The only difference between him and the other skin rat pieces of shit is I know his name. Honestly, Jerry. Hey! Hey, look, I'm, I'm sorry about the bitch and cunt stuff, okay? I'm sorry if that offended you. Honest. Get your exclusive old vanilla Comic-Con variants right here. Come on, let's do that rollout, okay? Let's just... Come on, people, check it out. Come on, guys, don't be assholes. I'm fucking apologizing. Better get on on this now, comic fans. Do you hear me? Only 15 penetration variants left. Hey! Megaphone dude, would you shut the fuck up? People are trying to talk here. 
Okay, so I'm the bad guy, huh? Blame me for everything, huh? Well, let me tell you something about your pals there. You ever wondered why Agnes Sorotsky stopped talking to you? It's because I told her you were going around telling everyone she fucked you, and your little Facebook pals over there backed that lie up all the way. Jerry? Jerry! Uh, it was for your own uh, good. She was a threat to the club. Come on, Jerry. You want to get us all thrown out? Let it go. Shit's ten years old. Oh, yeah? It's that right? Well, what if I let you in on a little secret? What if I told you Bill was Greedo 318? Okay, now... Wait, just hold on. You know he's lying, right? He's, he's lying. Jerry's a fucking liar. A liar and a traitor. A fucking tattletale. You trolled me all these years, told me to go kill myself. You little shit. You miserable little shit. W w wait ah. Look out, they're headed for Stranko's line. Oh, uh, uh, hey, shit, look out, hey, uh, get off of me! Uh, uh, yeah, what the fuck? Oh my god, did someone get a doctor? Stranko's been injured. He's buried under his own fan base. Why doesn't he just escape? Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. What if he's dead? What if Starenko's dead? What if we killed Starenko? We're fucked. We'll be arrested. And this time as adults. Starenko can't be dead. Starenko's a living legend. I'll never work in comics if I kill a living legend. Sweetie, sweetie, try to calm down. Breathe, okay? Remember what Dr. Lenvy told you to do. I, I can't, I can't breathe. Guys, we gotta get out of here. <laughs> you want to get out of here? You talk to me. While you little pussies were busy crying, I came up with a plan. Because unlike you, I haven't grown soft, complacent. I haven't forgotten how to think, how to act, how to move in the almighty Eltingville manner. Hey, what the fuck? Get off my table. <laughs> Shut up and give me the megaphone. Attention, attention, Comic-Con shoppers. We have a special surprise announcement for you. Jesus Christ in a quarter bin. What the fuck is he doing? No, Bill, don't do it. Okay, now listen up. One o'clock in Hall H. Surprise Firefly reunion with the one and only Josh Whedon. Need I say more? Firefly reunion? Josh Whedon? He said Josh Whedon, and I ejaculated. Firefly. Firefly. It's gotta be bullshit. Josh isn't even here, I know. They snuck Peter Jackson in last year. Fuck it, I ain't taking no chances. Me neither. Firefly, Firefly, Firefly. Me, 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 Firefly, out of my way, I'm coming, Joss! Fuck Joss Whedon. I have so many questions, Firefly, Firefly, I'm still ejaculating, Firefly! I haven't eaten some Joss Whedon. Firefly, Firefly, people stop, calm down, Joss Whedon's in Canada filling the Avengers Defenders War. They got airplanes in Canada, jackass. Where's Hall H? Firefly, 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 Fire? Fire? There's a fire? Fire and no flyer and get into that panel. <laughs> ah, Joss Whedon. Got a Joss Whedon. Holy shit, lady. Look out. Hey, get the fuck away from the... Uh, uh, no, shit. Uh. Oh, Jerry, your shitty little friend is dead. God, please don't let me die like this. Not with my Silver Age Green Lantern run incomplete. Not as a virgin with my dick still minted package. Not by fans. Not by fans. Not by fucking fans. What the fuck? What's all that noise going on? All that screaming. Sounds like the end of the fucking world. It's not the end of the world. Not exactly. Just the end of Comic-Con. 
Jesus Christ. I mean, Jesus fucking Christ. This is fucking unbelievable. Where do they get off saying this is the original Ecto-1? Look at that theme park shit. They didn't even try to match the interior. Oh shit, my bag. Where's my bag? Where do you think we lost everything hauling your ass in here? Yeah, Jerry even lost his girlfriend. Just when he made it to the car, she got swallowed up by a wave of stormtroopers. 501st Legion. Ah, uh, at least she'll turn up. My shit's gone for good. A whole ton of show exclusives and signed crap some dealers were paying me to stand in line for. Now I'm totally fucked. Join the club. We're all fucked. We're all gonna get fucking arrested. Ah, bullshit. Bullshit nothing. There are a million fucking cameras on us out there. How much you want to bet they're already getting death threats on the goddamn internet? We'll be public enemies. Nerd pariahs. Banned from every Comic-Con, shop, and company in the world. Even Wizard won't take our money after this. If we only had the keys, we'd just drive the fuck out of here. Hey, wait a minute. You guys see what I see? The chick with the glaive stuck in her neck. Oh, that's a lot of blood. No, no. All these cosplayers lying unconscious everywhere. At least I think they're unconscious. We could take their outfits, then slip out of the crowd, get a good head start. We'll need something fat for Josh. The Morian guard, or... Jesus, Bill, enough already! Just stop! Excuse me? I'm just trying to figure a way out of this colossal fucking mess you got us into. What? Are you crazy? You're the lunatic who yelled Firefly in a crowded convention center, not me! Hey, no one forced those morons to start to riot. Not only that, I wouldn't have had to get up on that table if you didn't start that fight. Remember? You threw the first punch, Jerry, not me. Nah, he's got a point there. What? No, he doesn't. And then you wouldn't have had to get those two involved, when all they were trying to do was break it up. Shit, that's right. What the fuck, Jerry? Yeah, Jerry, what the fuck? Excuse me? Can I just point out that no one forced you to kick Bill's ass? <sighs> you know, I wouldn't be surprised if you planned the whole thing right from the start. Petty revenge for us treating you like shit all those years. He's right, we did treat Jerry like shit. Yeah. Oh, for fuck's sake. I didn't even know you'd be here, Bill. It doesn't matter, Jerry. You invited me. And them. Even though you knew full fucking well something like this would happen. I mean, come on, it's us, right? The fucking Eltingville Club. Why else would you bring us all together? Why else would you tamper in God's domain? Hope it was worth it, Jerry. You sure showed us. Big man, huge high mage. I told you not to give him that come on guys crap. Yeah, well, who expected this? From Jerry. Bill, sure, but Jerry? I guess having a girlfriend and shit changes a guy. Hey, Jerry, what the fuck are you doing? Son of a bitch, he's making a break for it. He's trying to run out on us, the rat. You won't get away, Jerry. If they get us, they'll get you. We'll fucking make sure of it. Do what you want, I don't care. I'm going to look for Mandy. I just hope she's okay. Okay, Jerry, we get it. You got a fucking girlfriend. I hope you both get fucking trampled to death. You know something? I never liked him. Never. Know something else? The new Slimer design sucks balls. Looks like fucking Belly Elf and Basket Case. The remake in Basket Case, you know? They'll fuck it up. Yeah, they always do. I'll still see it, though. Oh, sure. And so ends the Eltingville Club for good. The second and last issue of the Dark Horse comic would release in 2015, and Dorkin has made it very clear that with the end of the series, he has noticed that many aspects he would make fun of, as a point of caution in the series, you would see more and more with the rise of the internet and nerd culture becoming more popular with the mainstream. Hate has escalated a lot online and on social media, and while I'm sure Dorkin and I would disagree where a lot of that hate comes from, no one can deny that certain sources of fandom have gotten a lot angrier and a lot louder. Some would point to the influx of so-called tourists or fake fans, who want to change every aspect of their media to fit their own sensibilities as the problem, and I won't deny that's part of the problem. 
Of course, there's always the corporations who want to change the media that they own in order to appeal to a wider audience, sometimes making it lose the original spark and luster that made it so popular in the first place. But as it's always been, it's also just as much the nerds who just don't like change. Nerds have been complaining about new things for years, and it's not gotten any better, especially now with so many channels and content creators who are built to stoke that flame. And it makes it worse when we add in wokeness from both sides. Yes, it's annoying when a character is race swapped, when it doesn't need to be, and when Iceman is turned gay by Jean Grey. But it doesn't happen as much as you think. The discourse has gotten so bad that any time a woman or a minority even shows up in something, you all get cries of wokeness and how bad it is right away. There's a theme in the Eltingville issues about having fun, and it's something Dorkin makes very clear in supplemental material in the hardcover, which, as of now, is fortunately out of print, but can still be read digitally. If something is not fun anymore, why bother doing it? If you don't have fun watching a show, why watch it? If you don't have fun collecting something, why keep it? If you don't have fun reading or talking or theorizing, why do it? When I see people on Twitter talking about Owl House or Steven Universe or She-Ra or something like that, I always tend to gravitate to the fans who are still having fun today creating new art, new theories, new comics, and so forth, rather than the people who can't stop talking about a series or a movie or a show they claim to hate so much. There's still a whole network of people dedicated on hating the new Star Wars thing, getting mad about Acolyte despite never before talking about the High Republic series or anything related to it in the past. If you know you will hate it, and if you think Star Wars is dead, why do you care so much? Stuff like this is supposed to be fun. Having passion is one thing, but obsessing about things you spend all day bitching about is unhealthy, to say the least. And I'm not saying you should not enjoy what you want, but the point is to enjoy it. And that does not mean just blindly liking everything either, but get some perspective. Like what you like, don't like what you don't like. And remember, it's all about having fun. This is The One Nerd, and I hope you've enjoyed this little video. It took me a lot longer than I think it uh, should have, uh, probably because I wanted to do the whole uh, comic dubbing thing at the end. I hope that was worth it. I hope people enjoyed that, because I had fun making it, and that's all it's really about. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll give it a like, subscribe for more, leave a comment on what you think about the state of nerd culture uh, as it is, uh, or if you've uh, read this comic, what you think about it, or what your favorite story was. Until next time, this is The One Nerd. And I hope you have a good rest of your day.